Okay, y'all want to know the secret to writing good copy or even just good emails in general, right? It's all about getting your ideal client's voice nailed down so well that they're like, holy guac, how did you even know? So that's why I'm seriously so incredibly excited to bring my friend Sarah on in to talk to you guys all about being able to extract past information from your ideal clients to better understand and then attract ideal clients in the future as well too. So let's go ahead and hit play on today's episode. It is a good one. Sarah, oh my gosh, please, please, please say hello and tell us more about you, what you do and all of the good stuff. Hi, Ashley. I really am excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm a copywriter and voice of customer research specialist. And yeah, I'm just glad to be here. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So tell me a little bit about like, how did you get into copywriting? I feel like, um, I know, I mean, I've shared my story with you guys here before. Um, you know, there's so many things within writing that you can do from like, writing short stories to poetry, to writing blog posts, to knowing SEO, like all of the things. Why did you specifically choose copywriting? I have been writing since I was a little girl. And um, one of the first online jobs I, I started for myself was actually travel blogging. And so I did do some of the blogging. We traveled to Florida, we traveled to the Bahamas, we traveled to um, Guatemala, and I loved writing about that. Um, which also taught me like SEO, it taught me headlines, it taught me all those types of things, um, which then kind of led me more into the marketing space. But then that led me um, to copywriting. So I loved kind of bringing in that longer form copy into or more longer form content into more strategic words. Yeah, totally. So let me ask you, so what is like one of the number one mistakes that you find when people are trying to do their own copywriting and they're just like, holy guacamole, like it's just falling flat. Like what is one of your number one mistakes that you see when it comes to that? Um, That they try to sound like everyone else. Um, They kind of copy what they see other people in their industry doing and they think, oh, well, this is a big guy. This is a guru. This is a big famous woman or whatever in my industry. And um, they try to sound like them and you need to own your own weirdness, your own uniqueness and your own um, voice. But also we need to focus on, I see a lot of people, they don't do enough research talking to their past clients, their current clients. Um, And so they're kind of just guessing at what they need to tell those people um, in order that so that they buy. Yeah, 100%. I think this is so incredibly important on two different levels. So the first thing that you had mentioned was about like owning your weirdness. And this is something that I know even for me in my journey, it's something that I have had to embrace in terms of with sea turtles and avocados and email and all of the things. And at first I was like, man, people are going to think I'm really weird for saying holy guac. And it's really interesting, the transition that you kind of go through. And it's not something that happens overnight as well. Like, especially when you're like somebody new on the playing field or even somebody who's already kind of built a brand as well. When you start to transition more into your, I don't really like to say the word authentic, but your more genuine self of like who you truly are at your root core, um, you know, there's a process within that. Um, And then the second thing that you mentioned in terms of with research, that is so incredibly important. And I think is like super crucial, um, especially when you're trying to write to your ideal clients and knowing what is that they say, how do they say, what does this process look like? Um, So tell me more about, I know this really segues perfectly into your method that you are such a genius at is what you call your, my, that's what she said method, right? Um, So tell me more about that. What does that process look like and all of that fun stuff? So talking about owning how your uniqueness, right, is I love the office. I love Michael Scott. I love all the things there. Um, And so when I was trying to figure out what should I call this service that I do, that's what she said came to mind Um, because we really want to talk to our past clients and our current clients and pull out the words that they're using. That's what she said um, to repurpose that in our content. Because a lot of times I see people using very industry specific terms. Like my husband used to work for a tech industry and they would use very tech language, gigahertz and megabytes and all the things, whatever that even means. Um, But their audience was 
boat builders and boat people. They didn't care about the tech. And so they wanted to know how is this tech going to help me? And so you need to dive in and talk to those boat brands and see what words are they using so that we can repurpose that and speak directly to them um, in a way that matters. Yeah, a hundred percent. So let me ask you how, I mean, this is coming from somebody who has gone through the process of having many like ideal clients, right? I feel like it, especially within my journey, you know, I went from doing like web design to doing like VA tech to like, if there's something I think I can do, I will do it. Now just basically moving into more of like that email marketing strategist slash CMO role. So within that, how would you go, especially as someone who's had several different kinds of ideal clients as my offers and things have shifted, how do you pick which ideal clients you should talk to? Because obviously there's some that I would be like, oh no, I definitely don't think I would ever want to work with that person again. Or, you know, I don't think this would be the great person for that. Like, how do you distinguish who you should talk to versus who you shouldn't? So if you have a service that you're wanting to repeat again, I would talk to them. Um, obviously clients that you really <laughs> melded, like molded really well with, that you connected really well with. Um, because some of the process is like, why did you choose Ashley? Like, why did you choose her over this person? And I know that's kind of awkward to ask if you're doing the research yourself, but if you can find out why they chose you, then reuse that in finding your brand voice, reuse that in finding the research. Um, and so talking to um, past clients that one, you'd want to repeat the service, but to that personality, because I remember talking to you one time and you were like, I just want to work with people who are passionate because I can't repurpose, like I can't duplicate that passion, right? Yeah. Um, and so talking to people who are passionate is going to be one of those things we can filter into the content and the research. Totally. No, 100%. And I think that's so incredibly important also too, because oftentimes I've seen people who are like, I've talked to like every single past client I've ever had, and they don't take that into consideration. And I think it's really incredibly important as well um, through that. So how do you recommend actually collecting those? Do you recommend doing forms, calls, tested, like just looking at past testimonials? Like what does that collection process look like? So in my process, I get on the phone and do focus groups with my clients, past clients that they've chosen. They have filtered through some of these things that I've suggested. Mm -hmm. um, and I get on a call with them and I ask them questions about pre-Ashley, during Ashley and post-Ashley, like, why did you choose her? What were you struggling with? What was happening at the moment when you were like, okay, I need to hire Ashley right now. Um, and then what was the process like working with her? And then afterwards, what can you do now that you couldn't do before? What does your life look like now? And then pulling in those things, um, those words and that they've used to describe those services that you've provided for them. Yeah. And I think also within that, that customer journey is so incredibly important, especially when it comes to sales. You know, this is something that I talk, Nick is like, I always want to be part of the show. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really about understanding, especially that before state it's often, for me, it's always super easy to sell the after state because the after state is fun. It's really, it's like, super incredibly exciting, whether it's you're going to lose 20 pounds or you're going to gain a thousand dollars in sales, like whatever that after state is, it's so incredibly crucial to actually anchor in the before, because a lot of times people come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't see how my business could create that much more revenue. Yeah. This month. Or they start to see, oh, I don't know if I could lose that amount of weight. Like I've never been able to successfully do it in the past. Or even when it comes to writing, I've heard people be like, oh my gosh, I've never had someone be able to actually capture my voice before. And those are all at the end of the day, limiting beliefs. Those are all just mm -hmm. beliefs and thoughts that people have around past experiences. And so when we're going through the process of pre-selling or even selling, it's really so incredibly important to anchor in those before thoughts. So that way you can address them. That way you can knock them out. You can bring awareness to them even of like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I was thinking that. Um, and so that is so incredibly crucial as well, too, of being able to go through that, nail it down, and then um, create a better way for you to sell to your ideal client. And I think too, um, well, I just did this service for a client and she thought her ideal client was one thing in the before, like yeah. she knew the transformation, 
But after talking to multiple of her past clients, they all had, I was like, I'm seeing a pattern. I'm getting really excited. Um, but she thought that her ideal client, she's a financial coach and she yeah. thought her ideal client was like holding tightly to their wallet. And like, they were scared to open it and they were scared to spend money. And I said, your last oh, six yeah. clients just came into a lot of money, mm-hmm. like yeah. all of them. And they're scared just to screw it up. Like that's yeah. what the problem is. And she said, Oh, so that's different. So now she's able to go out and say, like, are you like just coming into a lot of money? Are you scared to screw it up? Like it totally changed everything that she's saying on the before end on those pain points that they're struggling yeah. with. Yeah, because the thing is, is that in something uh, that I see all the time is we go through the process of listing on sales pages, even like this is who the service is for versus this is who it's not for. And I was like, it's so redundant to have the who it isn't for, because when somebody goes through that who it is for, it should be so specific that at the end of the day, people are able to go through and be like, this is who this is like, this is for me, like this is calling directly to me. And so having that research done is so incredibly important. And something that I did with my coach, Ashley Fernandez, um, Mm -hmm. as we were going through and figuring out like who I wanted to target for my email marketing services when I was starting out. Um, And even as you're pivoting, as you're doing new things, um, I work with a client now, uh, he's currently pivoting into a totally different sphere of what he's known for. Um, And all that research is so incredibly crucial for you to be able to really dive in and like get it right on the first try. Mm -hmm. For sure. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love it. So how can everybody connect with you? Um, I do not have a third arm for those who see the video portion. Nick's like, hello. (laughs) Um, How can people connect with you and all of the good stuff? Yeah. So sarahtalbert.com. And if you want to uh, see the research side, it's sarahtalbert.com slash research. Oh my gosh. Thank you so incredibly much for being here. I am seriously so incredibly excited for people to dive into this, implement it and do the things guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate and love you guys so incredibly much. And I would definitely want to make sure I extend you an invite on over into my free Facebook community, email marketing simplified, where we dive even deeper into crafting emails that make your subscribers go holy guac, what in the world? How do you know? I just sent that to my best friend Diana last night. Were you reading my text messages? Like <laughs> giving them that sort of feel. So guys, thank you again for being here and I will talk to you guys next week.